Indeed, all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahmaduhu, and that's why we praise Him. Wanasta'inuhu, and we ask for His help. Wanu'minu bihi, and we believe in Him. Wanatawakkalu alayhi. And we place our trust solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this trust makes us say, وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِن شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِن سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا We all seek protection, refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this time not from shaitan. This time we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection, His sanctuary from the evil that's within ourselves. I see nice cars in the parking lot. I want them. I can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you still think, well, these guys, 360 days of sun. I live in a place which is not so sunny. Envy, greed, lust, hatred. We don't blame shaitan for these things immediately, do you? No, you have human characteristics. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protection from that which is within ourselves. And we also seek protection from the repercussion of sin. We did this, we've spoke about this before. When I press the accelerator in the car, I go forward. What comes out of the back? Smog comes out of the back. Soot. When I burn a fire log, I might get a little bit of heat from it, but there's also ash. When I do sin, I might benefit by lying to someone in this world. But there's a repercussion. There's a soot. There's the smog of sin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from that. I can see on your faces that one didn't click. Let's do two quick examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ the salah, the salawat, our namaz, it removes us from fahsha. So if you're finding yourself simple to watch Dancing with Their Stars while your kids are walking around, maybe we need to get back to salah. Maybe we need to pray better. Maybe we need to have a more constructive relationship because the effect of not praying or the effect of praying distances you from fahsha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the one who lies, this is narrated in the books of Bukhari, the one who lies, his heart begins to blacken. Each lie places one black dot or one black spot. Effect of lying? Yes, you get sayyat and it doesn't work out very well in the hereafter. But here in this world, the effect of sin is what we're asking for. So I might cheat in finance. I might cheat at work. And the Benjamins in the bank account, they go up. The zeros, they go up. But my rizq, my finance, 
that I use to sustain myself, it starts going down. Effect of bad deeds? Yeah. When you cheat, more money goes up. When I disrespect my elders, are they going to disrespect me? No. One generation later, the youth of the community will come and I'll say, why doesn't anyone respect me? Effect of bad deeds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we start the khutbah, before we start this reminder, Oh Allah, save us from the evil that's within ourselves and the evil that is the effect of the bad deeds, the repercussion. مَن يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَن يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ Whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, nobody can misguide. But whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide, no one can guide him. Whoever blacks out the windows on their own and says, it's all dark in here. Imam Faqih, I said I wanted light. But with some, you blacked out everything to bring the light in. So when your actions affect the light coming in, no one can guide you except the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why every Friday we say, وَنَشْهَدُ أَن لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ We all bear witness, we, thank, we testify, we sign on the dotted lines of our souls, there is no other creator, there is no other sustainer, there is no other judge, there is no other Rabb, there is no other ilah, there is no other God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicate with us? We all bear witness, we sanctify the statement that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Muhammad Rasulullah, Nabi Kareem alayhi salatu wasalam, the greatest human being to ever set foot on the face of this earth. He is the final messenger and he is the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with what purpose did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send this messenger alayhi salatu wasalam? Huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda. Huwa arsala rasool. Man huwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arsala who came as this messenger. And what purpose did he have? Alayhi salatu wasalam, the greatest human being to walk the face of this earth, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was sent to us bil huda, with guidance, with the religious aspects of our life. Bil huda, with Quran and the teachings. Wa deenil haqq. And the true system of living. So it wasn't just about me and this brother praying Fajr or praying Dhuhr. It was about me and him living together, doing business together, interacting together. And then when the two of us became friends, how do we hate? How do we love? How do we marry? How do we divorce? How do we build? Wadin al Haq. So that this system that came from the architect of the sack that I slept in for nine months would become dominant upon all other systems. Who would have a better system than the one who made us? Even if the mushrik disliked this, kariha, Urdu speakers, Arabic speakers, you understand it. In English, hatred, hated. If they hated this, that guidance would lead to a true system of living, and it would become dominant upon all other systems of living, even if they hate it. وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Even if the mushrikeen, those polytheists, those who chose another system, if they hated it, this would come to pass. فَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So with that statement, with that very specific statement, إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنُؤْمِنُ بِهِ وَنَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَيْهِ That I place my trust solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I say unto you, فَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ I say unto you that I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaytan who isn't just Satan. He's damned. His rajim. He is the one who had the opportunity to follow the law of God and he said, doesn't work for me. So I seek refuge on, not only from shaitan, but from the tools that shaitan is going to use after this khutbah to get you to maybe commit one white lie, to make a small sin. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, with the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. If I ever benefited from anything, it's because of Allah, our Creator. And if anyone ever had mercy on me, it's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ Surah A'raf, ayah number 11. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And certainly, definitely, we created you. ثُمَّ صَوَّمْنَاكُمْ And then we fashioned you, hands, eyes, we made, we didn't leave you as that clump of flesh in the uterus. You weren't just a blob. We fashioned you. ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ We told all the angels, prostrate to Adam. فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Everyone made sajda. Everyone is in sajda. Imagine it. Just one guy right in the middle. لَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ That fire creature was just standing there. Everyone else is in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making sajda. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed a creature fire creature, do this. Just like we get instructed, halal, haram, you know, makru, these things. So the first creature who was ever asked to do something has the first chance of free will. God says, make sajda. Everyone does sajda, except Satan. So now the conversation ensues, but what I want you to do in the background is say, the first creature to ever make a sin, what tools did he use to get to that sin? Does that make sense? What tools did he have to get to that sin. So now this conversation will take place, but in the background I want you to write tools of shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What prevented you? What is, what is it that prevented you? Idh amartuk, when I commanded you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give a choice. If you all want to make sajda, this might work out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, everyone obeyed except one. He said, Idh amartuk, when I commanded, what stopped you, what made you transgress this bound? First, number one tool. Qala ana khayrun min. I'm better. Not I'm good. Not I'm the only creature who has free will and I'm still worshipping you. No, no, no. Qala ana Khair, I'm better. Tool number one of shaitan is not to think good of yourself. Tool number one of shaitan isn't being proud of who you are. Tool number one of Satan is not to make you feel good about yourself. Tool number one of shaitan is to say, the shaykh is all the way here from Corona, and guess who's standing up here? This is the tool of shaitan. To make you think you're better. But the next tool, we all know about this. I might speak Arabic, I don't speak Arabic, my last name is such and such. We have all of these things that make us feel better. But we can control these. But shaitan uses and immediately pulls out the second card. He said, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَّارِ I'm made of fire. وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ And he's made of clay. Friends, what is he doing? He's having a zoo, uh, a... Uh, Scientific molecular discussion with who? The one who made fire, the one who made clay. Does it, make any, it doesn't make any sense. Think about this. So now he's telling Allah, yeah, I'm better than him. But he explains, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَّارِ Check it out. وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينَ I mean, he's the, the molecular structure of clay is actually better. It's, what? Who are you having this conversation with? So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not respond. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have responded with many, right? I made fire, I made clay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't respond with the words that I am the creator. Before we get to that, ayah number 13, shaitan's second tool has been laid and it is for men and for women and everyone who is in that middle stage of growing from a boy to a man. Shaitan's number two tool is rationale and excuses. He makes you take your intellect and say, yes, the rules of a namaz, topi, roza, siyam, zakah, they're all great and nice, but my PhD, it's over here. Or he makes you give excuses. This is the second tool of shaitan. 
placing our intellect above the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But see how the conversation unfolds in ayah number 13. We started 11, 12, he made the mistake and tried to, he made the transgression and he tried to sell his, I'm better than him. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qala fahbit? Get down, look at the word fahbit, and about six words later, fakhruj. There are two processes here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling shaitan, get down and get out. This place is not the place to be arrogant. Exit. You can leave from here. That you are from the humiliated. You are from those who are صاغرين. humiliated, disgraced, if you will. Because this cheap excuse that I know more and I'm not going to rub my head on the ground 17 times a day, فَحْبِتْ minha. Get down. Get down if you think about it just out of, out of the box. Get off your high horse. Get down from this concept that you are genuinely better. But this is not the meaning. So now shaitan has a chance. He's played two cards. He said, I'm better than him and he used a rational excuse. The third ayah comes and he has this opportunity to do anything. What does he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we make mistakes, what do we do? We either make an excuse, we say, well, I didn't sin as much as that guy did. Right? We come up with something. But the third tool that shaitan plays, he says, Qala anzirni, give me a chance, give me respite, give me time ila yawmi yuba'athun. Give me a chance till the day of judgment. So what is shaitan doing here? First, there are two things to take out of this. Brothers, we dedicate tool number three to us. Sisters, it happens mostly to us. When we have to, forget about Islamic or non-Islamic, just when you have to take out the garbage at night, when you have to, your mother-in-law wants you to do something, when you know there's a class coming in town, you know that there's a halaqa at the various masajid in town, what do we do? Inshallah, afterwards, afterwards. I'll take the garbage out later. Oh, inshallah, inshallah. Will I see you out there? Inshallah. We procrastinate. We put off. Was shaitan procrastinating? Shaitan was buying time to dig himself a deeper grave. So the third tool of shaitan is laziness and procrastination. Shaitan will tell you, inshallah, later, you're so young, don't bother with this religiosity now. Or don't worry, you'll do it afterwards. And then when you're about 50, you're like, inshallah, when I turn 60, I'll go for hajj and you know, everything's going to be okay. Procrastination and laziness, the third tool. But did you notice something very interesting? Shaytan tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ أَنذِرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Who believes in the Day of Judgment? You know, some of us say, I'm Muslim, it's good enough. I believe in Allah and I believe in the... Who believes in the last day? Shaytan does. Satan believes in the last day too. It's not a very good excuse to say, well, inshallah, I'm Muslim, I believe in Allah. Actually, shaitan doesn't only believe, in, believe that there's going to be yawmi yuba'athun, what else is he doing? He's acting like there's going to be a day of judgment. He says, you know, I can get this guy, I can get him. He doesn't say, well, you know, I've been too evil recently, I just need, you know, after Ramadan we say, I've been too religious recently, I just need a little bit of break. You know, let me TiVo, whatever I TiVo, I'll watch that. Shaitan doesn't do that. He believes that there's going to be a day, إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ And he also doesn't take a break. So now he has asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْظَرِينَ Okay, you have a chance. You have respite. The fourth tool of shaitan comes in this one ayah. After being arrogant, thinking he's better. After giving rational, scientific, if you will, excuses, trying to trump the law of God, he's trying to put off and dig a deeper grave. <coughs> the fourth tool, if we can take it, would be more important for all of us in the masjid. Everyone else can use the first three, but us praying Juma today. Only Satan could word it like this. 
Bima awaitani. Qala fa bima awaitani. He asked Allah for a chance till the day of judgment. Allah said, "Okay, you have a chance till the day of judgment." So then he responds to Allah by saying, "Because you misguided me, I am going to sit la aqudan na lahum sirata kal mustaqim." The two points to take from here. Most importantly, Shaytan is using this tool. And how many of us in the academic world have heard, "Well, if God wanted to guide me, God would guide me." So I'm just going to wait till God guides me. If Allah wanted me to be a good person and become naik and pious and have bid and taqwa, then Allah knows everything. And then you say, well, God will take care of it later. Next time you hear that argument, very politely tell the person, you sound like Satan. Shaytan used the same exact excuse that if Allah knows everything, then he flipped the coin. Shaytan said. You misguided me. That's why I'm doing this. We flip the coin and say, "I'm not being guided because Allah doesn't want it." It's not a tool of Shaytan. It's rhetoric. But the second point, remember, the most important. Where did Shaytan say, "Because you misguided me, I'm gonna sit la aqoud sirata kal mustaqim"? Shaytan's not hanging outside the bhangra club. He's not waiting at the hookah lounge and saying grape or double apple. He, he's not waiting there, like, "Oh, one more drink, buddy. Just one more." Shaitan sitting here. لا أقعدن لهم صراطك المستقيم. And this is where truly I'd like you to play your numbers correctly. Of those of us who are in the musalla right now praying Juma, that makes us religious. How many people are outside? Most of everyone here knows ten people who are not Juma. So if the five percent of us who are religious. Are fighting because Shaytan sitting on the straight path saying that guy's got a beard. Oh, that guy doesn't have a beard. Shaved mustache, trimmed mustache. Oh, gloves, niqab, jilbab. His tariqah is different. My aqidah is different. So if the five percent of us are trying to kill each other because he wipes over cotton socks, what is everyone else doing? Tool number four of Shaytan. Very confusing, but very clean. When we get a little bit close to praying and being religious and being working together as a group, me and this brother, we're in one group, and those guys, different group. We don't work with them, right, brother? Me and you, we don't work with those guys because their way is incorrect. So Shaytan will sit in the clear path. Tool number four, he will sit in the clear path and make it look very rigid. He will make it seem as if. I'm the only guy going to heaven. Everybody, you know, 72 sects, they're all going to hell. Tool number four, Shaytan. Yes, there are wrong things in our religion. There are thing, people who take our religion and misquote it and blow things up and kill people. But the average Abdullah, the average Fatima, do you really think they're deviant? Or could we work together to, to teach each other? This is where Shaytan wins big. And the time expires, so we only do one more. And this is possibly where it gets very, very vivid. Shaytan gives us a very clear mapped out, you know, the strategical plan of a war. So you have these four, and then he says, "Thumma la anti anhum min bain aydihim wa min khalfihim wa an aymanihim wa an shamailihim." So he says, "God, you misguided me, so I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit." Ilah siratak al mustaqim. By the what do you say seventeen times a day? Allahumma idina sirat al mustaqim. So know who you may meet up with in the path. So Shaytan says, I'm going to sit here on the straight path. La aqudanna. Very strong emphasis. And he says, Thumma la atiyanna hum min baini aidihim. I'm going to come from their front, from their back, and from their right, and from their left. And while Shaytan is closing in on us, I would ask you to move forward. You can close in on me so that the brothers and sisters in the back have room. The Izn Allahi Taala, just like Shaytan is going to come. There's very large pockets. I always wonder what the rational excuse is when I announce about moving forward and people don't move. I always wonder why. But inshallah, one day I'll find out. So Shaytan says he's going to come in the front, in the back, in the left, and the right. Right and the left. Now I look through various tafas here, waiting to see what is Shaytan coming in front. Of? The devil doesn't come sit in front of you. What's in front of us? What's in front of us? Like after this khutbah, you have to go back to work. You have to get lunch. I have to do readings. After that, then I have a class. After that, what happened? Eventually, we're gonna die. 
and eventually we're going to go and meet our Lord. What does shaitan do in front of us? Akhira, oh Babu, it's so far away. Ya Basha, Akhira is something at the end of the world. Don't worry about it right now. So he makes the Akhira look very, very far. And what's behind us? What's now? Act now, January sales. Act now, foreclosure market. Act now. Because on a Black Friday, we make a lot of green. So act now. Invest in your children's future. Act now. He makes what's behind us. Because right now, five minutes ago is gone. And two minutes ago is gone. And one minute ago is gone. And when I said it was gone, that's gone too. But shaitan makes that look very close. Akhira, that hereafter God is going to see me and my actions far away. But act now. Because you never know a little bit of interest, a little bit of wrong, a little bit of chatting online, it didn't kill anyone. People do a whole bunch of haram things. Just a little bit. Just a little. And he said he will come on your right side. What is on our right side? When we receive our book, our good deeds, right? So shaitan will come to the person and say, Brother, you prayed Fajr in the masjid this morning? They should build a little building around you and walk around it seven times. He will make your good deeds look unbelievably huge. You were nice to your mother? Allah, we should build a darga around you. You know maqbara? We should, and we should all visit you because you were nice to your mother. But isn't that what God wanted from me anyway? To pray, to fulfill the rights of my neighbor. He will make the little good deeds. You put five dollars in the masjid fund? Allah, wow, look at you. And then on your left side, what will we receive on our left side? Our bad deeds, right? Our bad deeds will come on our left side and please do the math with me. Because I'm not giving a khutbah to you, I'm reminding myself, really with these four. On our left side, how many of us sin and say, but that guy does something more haram? How many of us would backbite about somebody, well, she's fat, why does she have that purse? And then when someone says, man, that's so hateful. Well, you know what she did? He make our bad deeds look very small. And he starts to compare bad deeds. He starts to say, well, so you yelled at your wife. You know what the guy in the street is doing with... Oh, see, no problem. He makes our sins look very small. So he said, I'm going to come in front of them. I'm going to come behind them on their right and on the left. And you won't find most of them shakirin. Why didn't shaitan say you won't find most of them believers? Shaitan's nth goal with us right here, he's not going to come up to the brother after Juma and be like, look, according to the khutbah, you should now be a disbeliever. That, and you should go and drink. And It's not going to work. Shaitan is going to come to us and say, little doubts, little doubts. Shaitan is going to want us to be ungrateful to Allah. So I close on this one small point, this one concept. That it is not about saying thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in the Arabic language it's a verb. We give thanks to Allah. We don't say only, merely say, thank you Allah. We don't merely say subhanallah, but we take the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we glorify them. We take the rights that the Quran has upon us and we glorify them. So if you could keep this, we didn't get to finish all the seven tools, but we do have four. And we have four ways that shaitan is going to attack us. So next time someone says, let's go learn something about Quran. Oh, you mulvi, you sheikh, so old. Come with something new. They're making Akhira look far. And when someone says, it's just a little haram, it's only one day of your wedding, you don't have to wear hijab. It's just a little bit of makeup and a little bit of, just one day, right? When shaitan sells that, I'm not buying. When he tells you you're amazing because you're do fulfilling the rights of that God gave you, how come Satan never came to you and said, you can see, you can hear, that's so what? Because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Allah gave us those rights to see. Now let us use them. And on the left side, let us not take sin to be a little ordeal. I will close and I ask you to do this much. Between the sittings of the khutbah, there is a narration. I will leave it at that that the dua is not rejected. It is a narration. Between the khutbas, whoever's in foreclosure, make dua, I'll make dua for you. Whoever needs to get engaged, make dua, I'll make dua for you. But give me the last five seconds of your dua. Oh Allah, I want to leave here equipped 
to at least understand how shaitan is coming at me. So when I want to yell at my wife, oh, tool number three, laziness, procrastination, I'm just being irritated. When I think I'm better, tool number one. Tool number five is anger. So when you get there, I want you to at least, it, no one said you're not gonna, you're gonna become a perfect person after this khutbah. As, as we look through it, knowing the fact that you'll get a ticket doesn't stop you from getting a ticket. We all get tickets. But at least knowing that there's a repercussion and that this is not just hap doesn't just happen, but it happens through the tools that shaitan uses against us. In the second khutbah, we'll tackle just a few words on how to dismantle that. Bi'idhnillah, make dua between the sittings. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma sifun. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد <coughs> We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as forgiveness and for his mercy for anything that we have done knowingly or unknowingly We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who if we have looked at anything on, a on the street or on the screens that is keeping our dua from being accepted, our supplications from being accepted, O oh Allah, cleanse that from our eyes and make us from amongst those who guard our eyes. O oh Allah, if we have loosened our tongues to our spouses, if we have unwrong, unrightfully been raising our voices to them, O oh Allah, make us amongst those who are just. O oh Allah, if we have been disrespectful to our parents, make us amongst those who fulfill the rights of our parents as they have fulfilled our rights. O oh Allah, if any action is keeping our dua from being accepted, cleanse that from us. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. We close with one small thing that I've never been able to share in this topic. So what? I gave you four tools. I gave you five actually. No one in this room is going to be able to walk out of the door and say, I can combat shaitan even better. Because how did we start the opening of this passage? فَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Knowing the tools of shaitan is not the only part to gaining sanctuary from his tools. Who is the only one? مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَا وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَذِيَ لَا So who is the only one, our Creator, who can keep us safe? It is Allah. And how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us these seven tools for the average Abdullah? Through Qur'an. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even tell us about the tools of shaitan and how to combat shaitan? Through Qur'an. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a book and He said, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ In surah number 41, I believe it's ayah number 40 approximately. When shaitan imma yanzaghannaka min ash-shaytani nazwun, fasta'idh billah. Friends, I could tell you all the tools for three hours and paint them. Like when you leave, this is going to happen. You're going to want to watch the, a movie and this is going to happen. But that's not going to make us combat shaitan without the book that is the tools to undo his doing. Remember this when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim when do we say that? When we read Quran. When we open the manual to undo his tools. So if I taught you how to use the tools and what they do, it doesn't mean you're going to know how to take it apart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness and for his mercy. Those of you who came late, the last ayah that we close on every week. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba. Indeed, Allah has enjoined justice has enjoined ihsan, God consciousness, knowing that God can see us. And giving and spending in the path of your family, giving to your family members. If your wife asks you what the khutbah was about today, don't say nothing. Say, I don't know, but I'll find out. 
and on the flip side he has forbidden fahsha he has forbidden that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has restricted from us perverseness lewdness the glamour and the glitz that calls us towards haram wal munkar the line in the sand between halal and haram wal baghi and oppression if you know the tools and you have the opportunity to study the book of allah why oppress the voice inside you that says this makes some sense he's gone over time but it makes sense wala dhikrullahi akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un aqim as-salah